The thing is, uh, John Crudus. Uh, oh, excuse, John Crudass has not mm. written a work of. Uh, thank you. I'll be saying that quite a lot. Crud in his ass. Uh, <laughs> has not written a fantastical, fun, um, whimsical work of fiction that is uh, hilarious in its, you know, um, you might say, uh, bad style, but rather a quite drab and miserable work of fiction that is dressed up as a bit of theory and history of work. Mm. Mm. Jeremy Corbyn so, put crud in my ass. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's uh, right. Um, well, that, more or less. Uh, so Crudus was uh, this old blue labor guy who had essentially burnished mm. his lefty credentials during New Labor and the Miliband years, but was nevertheless sort of quite senior and well respected in the party. Mm. Uh, while he supported Corbyn's first bid for leader, that was basically the end of their yeah, association. When it was the and, banter yeah. sort of thing to do, yeah, precisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then essentially, very loudly supported Owen Smith immediately. I vaguely uh, remember Owen Smith was so good. I vaguely yeah. remember that even before Corbyn, I think he had supported John McDonnell, which was the even more banter mm. joke to do. Well, <laughs> it's be- largely it's because right a lot of those blue labor people. A lot of the blue labor people generally were sort of aligned with the left when it was the distinction when the distinction was between the neo libs in the party and everyone else, and then that that yeah, alignment the kind of like, obviously e- e- fractured. Every worker yeah. has the right to be racist, and Corbyn is just like, uh, what? Sorry. Yeah, every worker has the right. Good enough for me. So look, the point of talking about the book that he has written mm. is not to sort of mount a defense of any one particular ca- tradition of laborism, which, as we all yeah. know, is a uh, broken ideology and a dead party. I, v- I voted twice for labor uh, in yeah. Scotland, and I because don't know- Because you are a sucker. Yeah, because I am a cuck, because I'm an idiot. I, I-, I put both of my votes for labor. Um, well, you just you just hate the SNP. But that's also true, yeah. I, I, I want to spite them and defeat mm-hmm. all of their works so and, cast, and their, cast their ruin on the mountainside, but yeah. I have I voted today for nobody. Uh, I alphabetized my tasks in V, I did not get to. Yeah, I, 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 told, oh. I, I told the group chat that, hey, I, I voted Labour today and I feel horrible about it, but what else was I going to do? And every single one of you motherfuckers, both, like, hosts of the show and like just people who are closely associated enough with it to be in the group chat was like yeah i didn't vote you're out on a limb on this one it's yeah. just yeah. you yeah. cancel oh, for voting, labor. voting nerd uh, yeah. anyway <laughs> uh one of the things right is I'm, i i would like to sort of end up speaking less and less over time about the british labor party which we more or less have done since around this time last year however i believe it is worth discussing this book written uh by john crudass uh, entitled "The Dignity of Labor," uh, with not the Labor Party, but the Act of Labor, uh, because it was blurbed by Starmer and essentially the coveted is sort of, Starmer yeah. blurb. <laughs> yeah, and it's, well, essentially, it is. It appears to me to be the indication of the direction of travel of what Starmerism is going to be with regards to uh, the many workers of Britain, and um, it is. Uh, well, we'll get into what it is, but I think it's worth talking about, if only to uh, understand and also uh, to mock, uh, hmm. because in my opinion, uh, for all you Marx heads out there, it could also be called uh, the In Defense of the Gotha Program. Got in him. the extent, yeah. <laughs> Fucking the extent hottest burn of the late 19th century. <laughs> in as much as it is uh, riven with uh, woolly thinking. Um, so... Yes, uh, it is also full of, uh, yeah, these insane, ludicrous assumptions that we are going to enjoy mocking. Uh, For example, the entire book is sort of built on the premise of, well, they're called the working class. They must love working. Otherwise, they'd be called the leisure class. Sure. Makes sense to me. Didn't we all love working down the pit? A thing that we all did. And a thing which we can definitely all go back to doing. Yeah, uh, working is, is awesome. I love to be on an assembly line. I think screwing doors onto a Ford or whatever scam uh, takes over from the Ford plant in Dagenham. I, I think a lot about the opening to the American uh, journalist Studs Terkel's book, Working, where he said that because it was a book about work, it was necessarily a book about violence. Uh, mm-hmm. Both the violence that employers did directly and the violence that employees consequently did to themselves, whether that was like tearing their spines apart or even just like kicking the dog when they got home 
Um, mm. And I, I, I want to recommend that you read the book Working, listener, as a sort of antidote to the dignity of labor. Here's the thing, Alice. That's true. And Crudass kind of recognizes that it's true and then is like, also, it's good. Well, because it, 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 it makes you get solidarity, I guess. A thing which happens because you're being exploited, but not through <laughs> any like process of class relations, just because yeah. it sucks. It's, yeah, the, uh, it's, yeah. the four, it's the four Yorkshiremen shit, right? In our day, we thought we were lucky if we got thrown headfirst down the pit. <laughs> That's right. Um, anyway, also, this really should be seen as a big lead up to a huge punchline towards the end. Which you I, haven't I have not told shown me. this punchline to anybody, not even Alice, with whom I usually review uh, different elements of these shows. And nowhere is the weakness of this book summed up better than in this article in uh, Tribune by Owen Hatherley. He says that this book has written all over it that it's the product of a writer who knows his trade union history and his labor legislation, which is true. He also knows the story of his family and his peers, but has no idea what it's, la what it's like to work in the actually existing market labor market of the 2010s any more than I have an idea what it was like to be a metal worker in the 1970s. So that's what we're getting. We're getting uh, some mid-20th century workerist nostalgia hmm. as the kind of intellectual vanguard of starmerism. Classic. Everybody lives in terraced houses in the same town mm -hmm. and then gets up at the same time in the morning to go to the same job at the same place. It is, yeah, it is mm -hmm. very That's much right. like, it feels like a lot of like starmerism, at least from like the outset, is one where you kind of have this imaginary pub with imaginary guys inside that pub. And it feels mm -hmm. like this is just kind of like elaborating or fleshing out that universe where you still have the imaginary pub, but the people who are in it like work in coal mines or they work like down the kind of, you know, work down the factory. This is very Keir much Starmer's second life server. Right. This, yeah, this, this, this is effectively like what if what if like Keir Starmer and now John Crudis, what if they like decided to make mm. a nineteen seventies world on Sims? Now we have to go down the imaginary pub because of Sharia law. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, I'm Keir Starmer. Welcome to my city's skylines. Let's build. I like the idea that <laughs> if Keir Starmer like did build a did build like a pub on Sims, he would still be like kicked out of that. <laughs> That's right. I kind of Keir Starmer is a, a Minecraft YouTuber. He is the Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> I, d I do kind of want to build a 70s British city and city skylines now. Yeah. So. Anyway, uh, a little more about what uh, Crudass has written. Um, he also crams quite a bit of history and theory into his book. His theory of the left is basically that the modern left and Blairism <laughs> were the same because neither of them honor the bin man in the proper way. Too many That's fucking right. pronouns. That's right. Not enough That's bin right. men honoring. So My pronouns are bin slash man. <laughs> I'm always saying that once the bin started developing, like once, the once people put wheels on the bin, that's when socialism ended. Yeah. <laughs> so I, the thing is, right, is that the honor of the bin man, you could say like a close reading of Crudass's book suggests that it is essentially a kind of nice, soft Paul Embry, but he doesn't sort of go on sort of the tirades of the, about, you know, wokeness and so on. But he does say, and again, I think not altogether incorrectly, that Blairism kind of decided that the winners of the economy were going to be in the cities and they're going to have developed human capital and that the more human capital you have, you basically go into a caste where you're better respected than everyone else. Sure. And I mean, that's no, that is not a misdiagnosis. It's just, I think what's happened is, you know, you're, you're very much sort of um, fighting the smoke of a much more, um, yeah. a, a much and deeper fire. Also, like uh, on the specific level, the Blair prime ministry it, uh, it, mm -hmm. like is not that much of a moving target, especially now. Yeah, precisely. 